son-in-law number two. Uh, my mother-in-law, Florence, was a complex person, full of contradictions. On the one hand, she was a modern woman, educated, strong-willed, smart, opinionated. On the other hand, she was very traditional. Her beloved husband always came first. When G shouted, Florence, iced coffee! <laughs> she dutifully obliged with a smile on her face. Everything she served, she served with a flourish. When G asked for grapefruit, she would adorn each half with a tasteful arrangement of grapes or strawberries. She talked about her childhood, always in glowing terms, and she readily shared her opinions about politics and movies and baseball, but she was more reticent when it came to revealing her innermost thoughts and feelings. She was more eager to hear what others were feeling and their passions. She was a teacher, but even more so, a learner. <coughs> She took an active interest in the lives of those that she loved, who she loved. She met us where we were. When I became a docent at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, she became an art historian. For Janice, she kept abreast of the latest developments in the field of infertility, and she became an avid baseball fan. And Stephen and I suddenly had to make room for the new men in her life. She referred to the Yankees as her boys. <laughs> yes, these new interests broadened her worldview, but more importantly, they served to connect her to those with whom she cared most. It was, if it was important to us, it was important to her. Our passions became her passions. She had her rules. No telephone calls after 8 p.m. No calls during dinner. No calls during a Yankee game. But even if it were 4 a.m., she wanted, she needed that single ring on the telephone to signal that we were home safe and sound. My father-in-law loved unconditionally with his heart. Florence tended to be a bit more judgmental than he, and sometimes her high standards could leave you feeling wanting. But she was remarkably self-reflective about this. And at our Tosh League services each year, when we would ceremoniously throw away our sins, she would routinely ask for an extra slice of bread and commit to becoming less judgmental. <laughs> she expected excellence, but only because she believed in us. And those high standards served to bring out the best in everyone. But another contradiction, she was always prepared to let go of those lofty standards for a higher purpose. Case in point, while Florence was a superb cook and an enthusiastic amateur crit food critic, two of her golden rules of entertaining were, if an opportunity arises to invite additional guests to your home and you don't have enough food, just add another cup of water to the soup. And to prepare your meals in advance and use your freezer. <laughs> Both rules underscore the point. People are far more important than the food you serve. The more, the merrier. Spend time with your guests. My mother-in-law spoke nearly every day. I came to refer to her as Mamio. I was particularly proud one day when she referred to me simply as her son. I then made the mistake of asking her how she spelled that. And with a, a laugh, she said, S-U-N. <laughs> she often told me how speaking with me always brightened her day and made her feel better. So I've come to take that spelling as a compliment. Mamio never stopped learning and evolving as a person. When G passed away, she internalized his optimistic nature. She summoned her energy. Her calls and voicemail messages overflowed with expressions of love and pride. She was mindful of her blessings. While there will be others with whom to talk baseball and talk about world affairs, she's irreplaceable. I've lost someone who truly knew me, who brought out the best in me who made me feel appreciated 
and deeply loved. I'm sure many of you feel the same way. In her final years, Mamio expressed her love unconditionally with all her heart. A vision came to me at the very moment that she passed away. Her beloved G was beaming as he waited for her. His face <coughs> radiated love and pride as he extended his hand to welcome her to their eternal home. Our loss, their gain.